and the fountain of all honor. You have assembled in this place at such a time, Lord, to honor and worship you. Father, this is our act of worship that we dedicate and present you today. And we ask that, Lord, you may accept it and allow the precious blood of Jesus sanctify us so we may be rendered worthy and acceptable in your presence to the Lord. Thank you for the gift of salvation and thank you for according us this chance to come in your house Lord Father we ask you to accept what we have offered before you and that Lord you may bless the hands that have given and that all may be used for your sacred purposes as we also ask you to speak to us so we may be strengthened and edified, Lord. As we continue to pursue this way to the kingdom of God. To you be all the honor and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Welcome to the house of God. And I will ask that you take your seats in the presence of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We have been sharing about the prophetic timeline of God. Post it on the screen. We only took a break because for two weeks, the other week we were in Namaingo and last week Saturday and Friday we were in Usana. But I want us to get back to that message. We are getting back to the prophetic timeline of God. And when we follow that prophetic timeline of God, the sound is funny. Maybe you can make it sound better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can tune it a little bit. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Maybe leave it there. Turn that speaker face a little bit down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Thank you so much. So we have been sharing about the prophetic timeline of God. And when we fall through that prophetic timeline of God, we follow it so we may be able to find and discover where we are as a church. And when we fall through, we arrive at a place 
where the church is right now. And we find that the major event for the church ahead of us is the rapture of the church. And as we know, precious people, we are taking a spiritual journey to the kingdom of God and what is very very much important is for the Lord to be able to reveal to us the things that he has laid in place towards this journey that we are taking. As you can tell that the spiritual journey that we are taking is kind of imaginary. It is not a physical journey that we walk on and see. And that's why we need the revelation of God. So we come to the prophetic timeline of God and uh, it's speaking about from the time the Lord Jesus came in this world we are celebrating from the own right from the onset here when Jesus has resurrected from the dead Jesus crucified after three days he resurrects from the dead then he stays for over 40 days then he ascends to heaven we all know that his ascension to heaven came after he left a promise that he had gone to prepare for us a place. And then immediately immediately he ascended he instructed his disciples to go to the upper room and they shouldn't he commanded them not to leave until they received the power from on high and the day that power came the power of the Holy Spirit is what we refer to as the day of Pentecost and so when the Holy Spirit came on Pentecost that was that was was, that was the first anointing, the, the, the former anointing that was meant to plant the church. And that's why you see he's pointing to Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3 and calls it the church age. So from the day of Pentecost until now we are living in what is called the church age. And then you see that after the church age there is going to be the rapture of the church and then after the rapture of the church we see the tribulation as it's talked about in Revelation chapter 6 up to Revelation chapter 18 then after that we see the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and like we have already said there is confusion in the church outside there when you ask them whether they are aware that Jesus is coming back they always tell you we know that Jesus is coming back for the second time and so most of the people outside there they are aware about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ but they are not aware about the rapture of the church. The rapture of the church is concealed. And so, for us, it's a blessing that the Lord has opened it up. So we are looking at this timeline. The events that the Lord has laid down. And the reason the Lord has laid all these events is for one common achievement that we have been sharing about the same achievement I also shared with the people in Busana that is the human redemption 
the reason the Lord died on the cross was because of the human redemption the reason he ascended in heaven to go and prepare a place is because of human redemption preparing the eternal place now that is celebrated in Revelation chapter 21 where he, he celebrates new things a new heaven and a new earth and a new city of Jerusalem for new people those whom he has gotten anew so everything re revolves and rotates around the human redemption and so this what we are seeing here that then when Jesus Christ comes back there is going to be the millennial reign it's written about in Revelation chapter 20 and then after that after that millennial reign those of you who are tuned in last night when the men of God came to speak to us they were literally bringing highlights about this prophetic timeline of God and if you asked me anything I would tell you that anything that heaven calls a church at this time their preoccupation is about this this is the clock of the church this one here is the compass of the church this prophetic timeline is the GPS of the church sometimes you might not be aware but oh, you might be aware for example aircraft when they take off in the sky there while you are in the sky there there is no road in the sky there but there is what is called a freight path and so they use compass to navigate they use compass and the GPS to navigate when you look at the modern planes today they, they will always send information on your screen and they will be able to tell you we are these feet above the sea level and then they will tell you the space speed is this and the ground speed is this one so the, the space speed the speed in the space there and the one on the ground differ but they are using technology to give you updates from time to time up there you cannot even tell where you are you cannot tell that we are now flying over Kampala unless that information is sent so they will keep on updating you we are now crossing this feature maybe we are overhead Mount Moroto and its elevation is this feet beyond the sea level and the, this, the distance the, the distance between the peak and where we are flying is this there will be always those updates but the point I want out of this is for you to know that without that information you are lost number two even the operators of the aircraft they rely and depend on that information because when, when, when you are about to reach the destination or when the, the journey begins it is able to project and tells you that we have so many kilometers ahead so as you draw closer it reflects and shows that we have moved this distance and ahead is this distance and we shall be arriving in three hours time and for the, that they, they are always accurate and so 
The power of technology. I want to use that illustration to cause you to understand why we are talking about the prophetic timeline of God at this time. And so, you see, even the ground here, like where we are here, it is measured. Uh, uh, it is measured at some, 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 some. They use it. They use the, the geographers. They use what to measure above sea level. They use what meters. Feet, it's feet. They use feet. Hallelujah. They use feet above sea level. Because of feet, foot, wakulu wenyanya. So, not Rachel. The navigators of the aircraft. Ababa fusmanyoni. They don't use their their physical sight as as a person who drives a car. Tewa kosa masoka wengo muntu bola ba muntu avuge muntu kabwa kola. To know that now I've timed. Now this is the runway. This is where when I reach here now I'll be able to engage the the landing gear. And then here we touch down. They don't use that. They use technology to know. Because it keeps on communicating. Now you are this feet above. So when it reaches the exact spot where it has to touch down, it begins a countdown. Five hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. Touchdown. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the pilot is being informed from time to time. The reason is because you cannot use your, your wisdom to be able to navigate an aircraft. The same way for the church, for things that are concealed, and they are spiritual, and they are imaginary. You cannot use your wisdom to be able to understand these things. That's why we need the revelation from the Lord. And so this one is very helpful. Whatever we are talking about here is spiritual. You can't touch it. Hallelujah. But you can understand it and believe in it. We believe in spiritual things. Hallelujah. The things which we don't see. We believe in the things that are not seen and believe that they are real and they are there. So there are a thousand years when Christ is going to come back and even today I mean last night the men of God emphasized it. The raptured church is going to come back and will reign with the Lord. Then the great white throne judgment these events are yet to come. So from here up to here all these events are not yet fulfilled. And then you can see that uh, the earth is not coming to an end tomorrow. When he talks about the end of the age it doesn't mean that that's the end of the earth. It's the end of the dispensation, this age, the church age. The church age is winding up. Remember the advent, the coming of the church age also came with the grace. We've been celebrating it. That when the flesh put on, when the word put on flesh, he came with, I mean, he came with the grace and the truth. So this one it shows that the world will still continue. Sometimes, the Bible says, in Deuteronomy 20, chapter 29, verse 29, maybe you can post it there, then we shall come back to this. Deuteronomy 29, 29, the Bible says, that secret things belong to God. Other translations call them mysteries. For example, if you used King James, or if you go to King James, the word secret uses the word mystery. The secret things belong to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, go back to NIV. 
Some places, NIV, some places King James also calls it mystery. But he said, the secret things belong to the Lord. The Lord our God. But the things revealed belong to us. And to our children. Forever. That we may follow all the words of this law. Go back to the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, no, Rachel. sometimes the Bible says, it says Egamba. that 1,000 years are like one day in the sight of the Lord. So when he talks about the millennial reign of 1,000 years, I've always not phantomed it out. Are they our years, our calendar years here? Or oh, they are years after the Lord's calendar? Even when he talks about the seven years of tribulation. So some of those things we don't want to know. All we want is to believe that it will be a thousand years. And the mention of the a thousand years purely depends on God's judgment. So the millennial reign is going to be a thousand years on the earth here. And Jesus Christ is coming back. I want you to listen to that message which was given last night. The men of God have been speaking about that right from Jerusalem where they are now. You can tell that the church has entered into a very critical age. If the men of God are right now in Jerusalem and they said that the rapture could not have taken place until they went to the very place the very place where Jesus ascended from hallelujah but also the very place where his foot on the Mount of Olives where his foot is going to step when he comes back you will hear the details in that message that when his foot steps on that mountain even when you listen to the message of repent or perish the humble beginning when the men of God were at Menengai crater up there hallelujah they spoke about the second coming of the Messiah because the Lord had showed them how the Messiah is going to come and how his foot is going to step on the Mount of Olives. And then an earthquake will strike the mountain and shake the entire land to the extent that he's going to split into two. And then the, the street will form a valley in between there. The details you will hear them yourselves. But now, this is where we are. They are right there. And they are announcing to Jerusalem. Remember, all prophets of the Bible, they belong to Israel. That's one. Number two, all the prophets of the Bible prophesied in the promised land. Hallelujah. And so, this is an attachment and a confirmation that a prophet of Israel has appeared in our midst. How that way was navigated to the extent that right now they are prophesying in Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Interchanging from one mountain to another. Announcing to Jerusalem. Announcing to the people of Israel. And calling them up to accept their Messiah. He told them that the reason is there is because of two. Is, is, uh, two. Number one, to announce to them about the coming of their Messiah.
desire that they may prepare to know they may also come and partake then number two he, he, he said he went to announce to them to prepare for Israel to prepare for tribulation because tribulation is targeting Israel of course even the rest of the people who should have rejected the Messiah but the major target is Israel because then the focus of the Lord will be on Israel he's bringing tribulation to push them on the wall until they will accept the Lord their God and the leadership of the Christ the Messiah and then now they will be saved the Bible is very clear that the hardening of Israel is just for a short time until the fullness of the Gentiles has, has been achieved and then after that now the Lord will change the focus to Israel and say they will all be saved they will all be saved so these are mysteries these are very important things for the church to know so it's not in vain that we are talking about this thing the understanding of this will be the basis of your joy for having found yourself here let me tell you something in the entire of this land talk about Uganda here you will not find this being talked about hallelujah it's not there and so this is what we are seeing so after the thousand years the great white throne of judgment and so is, is, is going to take place and then we are seeing Revelation chapter 21 22 here and then the eternal state new heaven and the new earth then now everything will be complete now this is what I told you when you reach here is what I told you last time the Bible was celebrating that after Christ making war and conquer redeem mankind and redeem the entire creation and conquer all his enemies and put them under his foot the Bible told us that the last enemy to be conquered will be death after everything has been done then the earth and heaven will dissolve we don't know they will dissolve they will be destroyed hallelujah and disappear where they will go we don't know those are mysteries because you cannot talk about destroying the earth and because when you destroy it it will form a mountain like rubo hallelujah hallelujah but then the fact that the Bible says it will disappear. We, we, those are mysteries we don't understand. But what we need to understand is that finally the new earth in the eternal state there will be the new earth and the new Jerusalem for a new people who became new in Jesus Christ. For behold in Christ Jesus we are new creations behold the past has, has gone and the new has come forth. and so this is what we are celebrating so the reason we are combining the two in our heading and talking about the prophetic timeline of God and talking about the rapture at the same time is because we are tracing our roots and we want to get the update of where we are so we have found ourselves that 2000 years ago the church began right from here and we have been moving on and moving on as we speak we are around here just around here because we are told any minute from now the men of God while 
speaking last evening he said even before I finish what I'm saying the rapture can take place we are right here so we have moved the whole of this space and we are right here so if we are here I think focusing on such an event that crowns and culminates everything that has taken place from here to here is very much important it's very much important for the church to understand the journey we are taking it will never be complete for you as a believer when you don't know these things because if you fail to know these things then you will be just hanging you will be just hanging the Bible calls us to maturity and we have already seen this for example in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 Ephesians chapter 4 the Bible calls us to maturity the Bible calls us to maturity turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4 I'll begin from verse 11 he says verse 11 he says Let me begin from verse 7. He says, But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ appointed it. Verse 8 he says, This is why it says, When he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to each people to his people you see then verse 9 says what does he ascend what does he ascend mean except that he also descended to the lower earth regions he who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe I'm not going to explain this part here but one day I will explain it my target was from verse 11 this part here has a very powerful message but verse 11 it says so Christ himself gave some to be apostles some to be prophets some to be evangelists and some to be pastors and teachers now listen from verse 12 he says to equip, equip the word is to equip again to equip his people for the work of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ verse 14 then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and brown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheme scheming instead okay up to verse 14 
Tulemenga okumena na te abato nga tuyu gana Elanga tutuwa liwanga ulipewo yoku igilizibwa Mubukusa obaba ntu abengwe Nolo kukobele lokutesa kukobulimba And so the Lord is speaking about the equipping of the church And the reason he says the church has to be equipped Number one is for the work the works of service and he celebrates it that when the church has been equipped then she will mature up he says this equipping is also beneficial because it builds up the body of Christ and the building of the body of Christ is intended to bring unity in the faith whereby we believe in one thing and so if the church had been built up through so the various offices the Lord has put in place at this time we should all have been on one page in one faith believing that as a church we have moved and what we see ahead of us is the rapture of the church and so he's saying and number two we need to be equipped with the knowledge of God which here he calls the knowledge of his son in other words to be informed and once we receive that information we shall mature up. and the reason I'm sharing this scripture is that to call for your attention or to call you upon to pay attention to these things because now time for maturity has come and the Lord is coming for a mature church and because when he called us he also predestined that we be conformed to the image of the firstborn and so here he is saying not only the image but also we need to mature up to the very stage of Jesus Christ himself and this is what he's saying here he says maturing for a Christian is very beneficial because it's that maturity that is going to help him not to be tossed to and flow by any form of doctrine today we have thousands and thousands of doctrines thousands and thousands of doctrines coming from different angles the enemy is at work trying to distort the work of God and to mislead and this is very important because I've been talking about the aircraft here but there is what is called a radar radar just a radar that helps the aircraft to navigate a place where air traffic is controlled from so there is always communication between the aircraft between the aircraft and the, this place here so sometimes they are hackers if someone hacks hacks into that communication it is very possible that is going to send a long signal to the aircraft and tells, can even command them to change the flight path with the intention that they may get lost and the moment you disconnect from the rightful source then you are going to get lost you will automatically get lost so you can tell why the Lord is demanding that we may mature up and after we have matured up we may not be toasts that we may no longer be infants and because we are mature we may not be tossed back and forth by the waves and 
thrown here and there by any wind of doctrine when this one comes speaking this you follow and that's what you find in the world today that's why for us here we discovered the truth and because of that we even don't want to subject this truth to, to comparison let me hear what the others are saying Except that I compare with what the Lord is saying that is very dangerous when Adam attempted to do that when Eve attempted to do that she lost the battle so this truth we have received we have believed the Lord is coming and that's all we know we don't listen to other voices wherever they are that's their business our wish is one that they may listen to this voice but not us to listen to those other voices we have so many people who are once with us here and because of listening to other voices they were deceived they are no longer here so listening to two voices and they cannot be two voices at the same time if they are two voices at the same time and all those voices are coming from the Lord then they will not contradict they will speak the same when you hear it the other side and come this side it will speak the same but if you hear two voices at the same time but are contradicting that means one voice is deceptive one voice is misleading so for us we have now grown and our growth has given us the privilege to be able to differentiate between the true voice and those other voices based on what we want to achieve so the bible says we should grow we need to grow in these things we need to grow in the knowledge of God Christians are called to maturity we are called to mature that's why it is mandatory for you to have a bible as long as you can read a bible read your bible it will help you to mature if you cannot read and listen, listen, listen some of the bibles these days even have the audio part of it but the point is, is that you should mature after you have matured the bible says then it will help you not to be tossed to and flow by any form of doctrine any form of doctrine he says that you should not be tossed back and forth by the waves and brown here and there but by every wind of teaching and by the cunning craftiness by the cunning and craftiness of the people in their deceitful schemes so the deceitful schemes that we see here today is that which uh, uh, we know we've been talking about here hallelujah for example you remember that which we shared with the people in the conference in Busan a, a person is looking for money is looking for a preacher in an overnight is looking for money and then he says poverty is very bad poverty is very bad he read a scripture he read a scripture where the Lord said whatever the interpretation was but what he brought out in that scripture was that poverty was bad because even after Lazarus died he was not received in the kingdom of God because of poverty Lazarus did not enter the kingdom of God this happened last week he said last Friday in one of the churches so the preacher was teaching and was saying because of poverty Lazarus did not enter the kingdom he lacked where to go until Abraham saw him and just told him let me just give you space in my bosom 
And so he was just there. And then he was telling people, if a person brings you and puts you in his chest, would you be comfortable there? So he was trying to tell people that they needed to sow a seed because their blessings are coming. And after that, they may not be poor because poor people are risking entering the kingdom of God. So if you don't, and people were there, cheering up and celebrating. So this is what the Bible is saying. That you need to be mature. That you may not fall a prey to such people who are using cunning craftiness for their own benefit. And that's why this is important. So precious people, for us here, when we come here, we begin a journey, a serious journey that will end up in the kingdom of God. We recognize and appreciate that we are children of God. And we know and believe that Jesus Christ came for us. He came to die for us. Yes, indeed, it's true. Because when you read in the book of Galatians, flash it there, Galatians chapter 1 verse 4. The Lord, the Bible talks about it and emphasizes the very reason as to why Jesus Christ came in this world. He says, Agamba. Who gave him begin from verse 3? He, he says, Agamba. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 4. Who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age? Look at that. He gave himself for our sins such that we may be rescued from the present evil age according to the will of our God and our Father. So we know the purpose as to why Jesus came in this world. We cannot be lied to. We cannot be misled. Someone cannot tell us anything else than this one here. Now we know that the reason he came was to offer himself because of our sins. And if we admit that we have been sinners and those sins were leading us to judgment and the wrath of God but then someone comes and offers himself for us that our sins may be forgiven then he is saying that is now what we appreciate because by so doing we are rescued from the present evil age which is controlled by the enemy so I've taken time to speak to you and to emphasize the need for us to know these things. We need to mature as a church. We need to mature such that now after we've matured we may be able to do what God requires us to do at this particular time. That's why you see when it comes to the kingdom of God when it comes to the matters of the kingdom of God the Lord always brings forth and emphasizes the point of enlightenment such that we may be informed we may be informed about the things that appertain us to know where we are and then be able to do the things that we are supposed to do while still in that place. So when you look at the rapture of the church, when you look at the rapture of the church, when the Lord comes to talk about the rapture of the church, he talks about information. And not only the rapture of the church, but the kingdom of God generally. We need information. We have come to learn for example in the book of Matthew chapter 10 
chapter 13 from verse 10 this is what the Bible says it's talking about the matters first of all the matters of God when we study about God of course theology theology the people who study theology they say theology is the study about God and the question is why should people study about God so there are quite a number of things that are investigated there for example who God is but they also query the existence of God they query because human beings will always want evidence to believe in something so they query the existence of God but then but then we, they reach a point and believe that God is self-existent on his own that's one number two they reach a, they reach a point to believe that anything about God is a mystery. Then number three, one of the reasons as to why they study about theology is that uh, to know about God based on the revelation. So within there there is a subheading that is called revelation. And that revelation specifically why they talk about revelation is because no man Man, the Bible says no man has ever seen God and whosoever has ever seen God did it because God revealed himself to them and so without God revealing himself to us we cannot know God that's the truth of the matter when he wanted Israel to know him he revealed himself to them when he wanted Moses to know him he revealed himself to Moses he appeared to Moses and told him I am I am so they translated that word I am to the word Jehovah the self existent and the reason why you hear for example when you read the gospel according to, to Matthew Matthew hardly say the kingdom of God he always said the kingdom of heaven hallelujah hallelujah and then refers to Jesus as son of man the, 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 the typical Jews always always avoid to speak the word of God the word God or even the word Jehovah because one day I told you that they revere that word Jehovah so much to the extent that the ancient scribes when they were writing and then as they write and write and come across the word Jehovah that Jehovah Jehovah Yahweh when they come across that word that came from the word I am meaning God who is self existent so when they reached that word they dropped the pen whatever they were using to write they just drop it there and then before they write that word and then go take a shower in reverence in reverence to that go take a shower change the clothes and then get, get a new writing material and then continue that's how the Jews used to revere this used to revere the Lord and so there is that point that God is self-existent and God is invisible even the Bible tells us that he's invisible and so the fact that he's invisible it doesn't mean that he does not exist he exists and he reveals himself to those whom he has chosen to reveal himself without God revealing himself to you you will not know about him let me tell you something.
Something. To, oh, maybe I'll talk about it when we reach there. But number two, even about the kingdom, the kingdom of God, nobody, when you look at the Jews, for example, when you read the Bible, in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 17, he says, the law came with Moses. Again, that's John, chapter 1, one, verse 17 he says the law came with Moses for the law was given through Moses but grace and truth came through the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah now I want you to mark this word truth this word truth I want you to know that in this world where we live people have a lot of knowledge people have a lot of information but not even the knowledge and information is truth in the world here there are people who are revered people who are well informed like the professors are very much well informed the professors of this world the opinion leaders Opinion leaders. Opinion leader. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this world. No. But one thing no. that the world failed to know no. is the difference no. between this truth no. and a lot of information. No. We have theologians. No. We have so many people no. who have studied theology. No. They have a lot of information no. about how the Bible came into existence no. and many things. No. The history of the Holy Church. No. Who persecuted what? Who conquered who? Who did what? But knowing all those things does not mean that you have the truth. Today, we have a lot of churches and they speak a lot of things and they do a lot of things. But there is something here that is called the truth. And so this truth here is what the Bible tells us that number one, that truth is Jesus. Jesus Christ himself. Yes, then number two, that truth is revealed by Jesus Christ. Whatever that appertains the kingdom of God is the truth. And that truth is always concealed. It's concealed. And the truth is only found when we talk about the kingdom, the kingdom of God, which they call the kingdom of heaven. Because they don't want to mention the word God often. But when you talk about the kingdom of God, any truth about the kingdom of God has to be revealed. It is not known. Why? Because in the beginning, in the world, at the point of creation, there was the truth. There was no lie. There was no deception at the point of creation. But then, when Satan came and conquered man, then he introduced the deception. The mankind, the mankind, the people who came after, they have been agents of lies, agents of deception. And so that's why everything was withdrawn and Christ retained the truth. So that it doesn't matter it doesn't matter that the law of Moses it doesn't matter it doesn't mean rather it doesn't mean that the, there was no truth in the law of Moses. This means that in the law of Moses. Of course, the Bible talks about the letter. It talks about the letter. It talks about the letter. It talks about two things. The letter and the spirit. Have you ever talked about that thing here? And when he talks about it, he says, I hope I'm not confusing people. Because we have to mature. I'm handling things that are a little bit advanced. But the Bible 
talks about the letter he talks about the spirit he refers to the law and the grace when he refer, is referring to the, to the law of Moses he uses the letter and when he is referring to the grace that abounds in the church age he refers to the spirit then he says the letter kills but the spirit gives life I took time to explain to you what that means I am not going to say about it now but because there is a point I want to bring out of here now everything about the law was concealed hallelujah it was concealed everything written in the law was concealed and it was speaking about the Lord Jesus Christ the entire law was about the Lord Jesus Christ and that now when you get the law and interpret it without the revelation of the spirit of Jesus Christ then, then it becomes a mere letter but when you get the law and interpret it and interpret it according to the Lord Jesus Christ then the outcome is the truth that's why he says that he's coming the grace the grace and the truth came through the Lord Jesus Christ why because one of the things that Jesus did when he came here was even to tell us about the truth that is in the law that's the argument that, that is the argument the argument of, that's the argument the argument that took place between the Lord and the Pharisees they were arguing about the same thing they are arguing about the law about the law the law of Moses hallelujah they are arguing about the law of Moses, of Moses. the reason they were arguing Jesus breaking the law according to what they knew they were not seeing the Lord doing what was supposed to be done by the law and the Lord came to fulfill the law so he was bringing out the liberation to change people to, to, from the way they used to think about the law now to the truth and so what I'm telling you the church of Christ that are seated here is that this truth whatever is called the truth about the kingdom of God we receive it through revelation hallelujah, hallelujah. as God is concealed even the truth about the kingdom comes from revelation now, the truth is always revealed by the Holy Spirit and in the dispensation of where the Holy Spirit is operating there will always be revelations revelations and revelations revelations and revelations and that's why you see I will always make those references when you look at this Bible here when you look at it the, dis the distance the period between the book of Malach to the book of Matthew there is a period of, of 40, 400 years now during those 400 years there was no revelation in the land of the Bible hallelujah, hallelujah. and so but still even when there was no revelation there were religious people people the Pharisees and other religious people they were there so during that time there are 14 books either 12 or 14 hallelujah that are called apocryph apocrypha those books were written during that time and those books were rejected they are not part of our Bible here 
apart from the Catholic Bible. When you read the Catholic Bible, it has more books than the books that we have here. There are funny, funny stories there. I don't want you to go read it. But yes, you don't want it. Yes, I don't want you to go read it. But it has more, more books. But, but the reason why they were rejected from this Bible is because they said the time, the time they were compiled there was no revelation. And I agree with that. Yesterday I was speaking to some people and I told them that revival simply means the ministration of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is ministering, there is life. And that life also brings revelation. There are revelations. And I told the people there that there have been several revivals orchestrated by the Holy Spirit to the extent that even some of these religions here, they began as revival movements. And so, then that's when you hear when the revival comes, the Holy Spirit gives people different gifts. Others, he gives them now gifts to, to compose songs that, that are anointed songs. To a person comes up and then brings a song inspired by the Holy Spirit. But when the revelation and the ministration of the Holy Spirit is withdrawn from a revival movement, what remains there is called religion. Religion means to read the letter, to read the letter without a nukta, without the Holy Spirit, to interpret the Bible without revelation. And that's the argument we have. For us here, we are operating under open heaven, we are operating under the dispensation of the latter rain. It is very evident. The Lord is giving us revelation. He is speaking. But because even those days when he wanted Jesus to be born in this world, he did not speak to the Pharisees. He did not say, you are the custodians of the things of God in this world now. Because remember the Pharisees were operating without the spirit of God. So when they took the law, they interpreted it mechanically without revelation. And in, in, in that situation, in that confusion, the Lord did not speak to them about about the birth of Jesus Christ. Remember, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit, or the angel of the Lord, one of the two, came and spoke to Joseph, and spoke to Mary. Then when you go to the Bible, you will find, speaking about Simeon, there was a man, called Simeon, very devoted, he got it, by the level of the Holy Spirit. And then there is another called the prophetess who prophetess Anna we clap for Joshua. He has saved you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, prophetess Anna. So they are just a handful of people that God spoke to them. So for them they had first hand information. So even when they saw Jesus born as a baby they just knew that this is not an ordinary baby. But this is the Christ. But remember the entire community 
of the Pharisees and the Jews the Lord did not speak to them hallelujah and because he had not spoken he had not given them that revelation they remained in the darkness there they refused to believe they had no revelation there is no way they could have believed unless they got a revelation let me tell you somebody it's a terrible thing when the Lord is advancing his agenda and then he lifts you out he comes and speaks to this one he speaks to the other and speaks to the other and then leaves you there you will never understand when you see these ones serving the Lord with, their, with all their hearts then for you will not understand you will see some people saying enough is enough if this marriage here is taking me to hell regardless of what is good there I'm leaving it some people will say they will call a council and sit you down say who bewitched you how can you leave these things the two are different one has a revelation the Lord has revealed it to him or to her that the Messiah is coming and for a holy church you need to turn away from sin and the others are in their world they don't understand anything they are there. And so that's what happened. And that brought a very big controversy between the Lord and the rest of the people. The few people, let me tell you, what made a difference in the life of John the Baptist was a revelation that he received. What made a difference in the life of Anna, even to believe that this is Christ was because of a revelation that he received. What brought a difference in the life of Simeon was a revelation that he received. Those people were unique. They had a the secret code. They had some secret information that was not known. I'm saying secret things belong to God and he's saying let me read it. Let me read it. We shall come back to Matthew. But let me first read First Corinthians chapter 2 hallelujah we are talking about these things here that I told you they are called eschatology the end things so 1 Corinthians chapter 2 I'm going to read from verse 6 maybe they flash it on the script on the screen here he says, he says we do however speak a message of wisdom among the mature again among the mature but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing anything called wisdom without the truth the truth that comes from heaven is something else it's totally nothing you can say or you can see that here the Lord is speaking about some kind of wisdom and the wisdom goes to the mature people we have seen who are those that the Lord calls mature Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so no, he says Agamba. and that wisdom is not the wisdom of this age. You can say the wisdom of this world. But this now should have come from the liberation that comes from above. It does not even come to the rulers or those who are influential in this age because whatever the wisdom and anything of this age will come to an end so in the next verse here he saying no we declare God's wisdom and that's the wisdom we need he says he says this this wisdom is a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before, before time began. 
Look at this. He says, There is what is called the wisdom of God. And number two, he says, This wisdom of God has been a mystery. That for you to acquire the wisdom of God, you need a revelation. Why? Because mysteries, meaning secret things, they belong to God. And they are things that God deliberately decided to keep as a secret. That's why he's saying it has been hidden. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It has been hidden. But yet God had this it for our own glory. Because we know that the last achievement, the, the, the final achievement of salvation is glorification. And so there is a wisdom that needs to be applied there next. He says it was even hidden and destined for that before time began. He says none of the rulers of this age understands it. For if they had, they had, they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Next. However, as it's written, what no eye has seen, uh -huh. what no eye has seen, what no ears has heard, and what no human minds has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. There is a revelation here. We are living in this dispensation. The things we see, the things we hear are human boggling. Hallelujah. They are human boggling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so that's what he says. Yes, he has keep, he kept them. And then when that time comes, he will bring a revelation. Now, why? Why does he talk about this? He's saying Agamba. that the challenge with this world, if anything happens, even today, the reason we speak to people about some testimonies is that if one has a condition that has never been and so when they come to the Lord for healing sometimes it's very hard for them to believe that they can be healed but if you want them to believe that they can be healed you tell them ah, our Lord is able don't you see maybe it's a skin condition we had one called baby Shaline and they, they had leprosy over. But now you see the Lord healed. So when they see that which has ever been, then they are able to believe. They want to make differences. But for those who believe, the Lord is saying here that there are things that He will reveal. Whether, I mean, things that have never been. And He says, what the eye has not seen, what the ear has not heard. So when you hear what has never been said. We have a serious argument. We have, we have a serious argument. No, an, an argument. We have a serious argument. You know, the blackmailers are faulting the men of God on so many things. Sometimes, like there is one, this one is a journalist. He's a journalist. And they are using the wisdom of the world. So they, they made a documentary about, about what is taking place in Jerusalem right now. And then now they begin quoting the words the man of God has been saying. And then they conclude by saying for us to believe what Prophet Owoli is saying then 
He said, we leave it in balance there. It will be up to you to look into these things and, and be able to, to decide whether what he's saying is true or not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has given the assurance. But even raising a cripple has never worked. Since that you believe even the message that he's saying. But still they don't want to believe. Maybe probably because they have not seen it. So this is where the revelation next, where the revelation is very important. He's saying these are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. Again, the revelation of God comes by the spirit of God. The spirit searches all things. Even the deep things of God. Next. For who knows the person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. There now, we rest our case as human beings to know that we shall always need the Holy Spirit to understand certain things. And for you to understand, the Holy Spirit has to reveal it to you. If he reveals it to this one and does not reveal it to you, he will be left there. You cannot understand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So next he says, he says, for what we have received is not the spirit of the world. Then I think there's another spirit here called the spirit of the world. The spirit, the Bible calls him as well the prince of this age, the prince of the world. The, that spirit diverts people and make them to focus on the things of the world. But when the spirit of God comes, he diverts us from focusing on the world and the temporary things of the world and make us focus on the things of eternity. So that you can even and tell that when you are a human being you have one of the two spirits hallelujah. hallelujah either the spirit of the world or the spirit of truth but sometimes you can deceive yourself that you have the spirit of truth yet in actual sense you have the spirit of the world that if your heart is searched you talk about God with your ribs but deep inside you it is the world that is in you you love the world and the things that the world can give and you are willing you can even disappoint the Holy Spirit but don't disappoint the spirit of the world that has filled you with materialism and so that's what he is saying that the children of God and those who receive those revelations they receive the spirit of God the spirit of truth and that spirit is not of the world but is a spirit who comes from God and the reason the Lord gives us that spirit is that we may be able to understand what God has freely given to us and so this takes place during the time of open heaven like now we are now we could not have under, we could not we could not have understood about the rapture until the lord released his spirit the spirit of God upon the men of God that spirit of God we share in so if you have the spirit of God and I speak a message about the spirit of God the spirit of God who has given me a message will also be at the receiving part in you when you receive the message the understanding of the message of God 
Katonda. For you to understand it. Is when you get the revelation. If a message is preached. And you don't get the revelation out of it. Then you have not understood it. Because. Without a revelation. You cannot explain that message. So sometimes. When we are preaching. And then after that. We ask people. To weigh in. To come in. And ventilate on the message. There are days where everyone is quiet. There is no revelation. They had everything. But they cannot put it into context. And then in their own words. Be able to communicate it out. Then that is a serious issue. The evidence. That you have understood. A message from God. Is when now you are able to communicate it out. The reason I'm speaking to you about the rapture of the church is because I got a revelation. And for you to go tell another person about it, you need a revelation. But for you to get that revelation does not come from the spirit of the world. Hallelujah. You can't watch Nigerian movies and get a revelation. You can't listen to worldly preachers and get this revelation. What you feed on, what you feed on, what you feed on, that will determine what you give out. When you are fed by the Holy Spirit, your language will be like the Holy Spirit. When you are feeding from the source of the world, your language will be worldly. Even interpretation is worldly. That preacher have told you. I've told that the preacher I told you he was saying that Lazarus is not in heaven. He was telling people. He was telling people that for him he was a nobody. And then the Lord spoke to him and told him, You are going to begin boarding planes going across the world. And he was now telling people, You see me here. I've always been boarding planes. And you can see people who are covetous. So, so, the only thing they are wishing for, if, if Jesus is good, if Jesus is good, let him also help me to, to, to board a plane. Those are worldly things. So, a person who sits under that discipleship, there is nothing they are going to talk about Jesus apart from those things. In the Busana, there's one who came. He came with a vehicle model as a man. They are vehicles that they used to be called Toyota Corona. Chivina. Toyota Corona Chivina. Doctor Yajirinako. Yes. That Toyota Corona Chivina. Toyota Corona Chivina. In Kiswahili, they are called model as a man. When you look at it, even the tires are like this. The thing is open like a lion, like this. But it was called on the pulpit there. You are not there, it was on the day one. Yes. So when he was called there, he began to tell people, I hear this God, when you obey him, he does for you things. Look at me. I was a nobody. But God has elevated me. Even when I was coming, here. I came driving myself. Wow. You needed to see what he's talking about. You really needed to see what he was talking about. That is what the church has been receiving from. The church has been receiving from the spirit of the world. They glory in the things of the world. The Bible says those things of the world of this age, he says, they pass by. And so we need the Holy Spirit. So he says, we have received this. We have received, he says, what we have received is not the spirit of 
the world but the spirit who is from God so that we may understand what God has freely said the reason I'm saying this is because I told you that everything about God is a mystery for you to know about God you need a revelation and that revelation you get it from the spirit of God number two everything about salvation is a mystery hallelujah, hallelujah. even that John 1.14 in the beginning than the word put on flesh that alone is a mystery you need a revelation number three even when it comes to the kingdom of God you need a revelation when it comes to the rapture of the church for you to be able to understand hallelujah for you to be able to understand that which the Lord is speaking about the transformation we need a revelation hallelujah, hallelujah. next so he's saying that the spirit of God when he's given to us he will make us understand the things that God has freely given to us this is what we speak not in the words taught by human wisdom but in the words taught by the spirit that's the letter and the spirit they are two different things and I told you oh we have people we have big people here I mean they have read books and it's a source of honor here hey, they have it a lot they are rich when you talk about the knowledge of the world they are very rich very very rich but they don't have the truth when it comes to the truth they are very poor to the extent that because it was not given to most of them even a small truth of believing that Jesus Christ is the son of God or Jesus Christ is Lord they don't have it and they can never believe and let them be able to believe in the kingdom of God those people you hear called the atheists those people when they come to the knowledge of this world they are highly learned they are very rich but they don't have the truth so he's saying this is what we speak not in the words taught by human wisdom but in the words taught by the spirit explaining spiritual spiritual realities with spiritual taught words next so he goes on to say this is very important the person without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned honest through the spirit in other words they are spiritually discerned this is what we are dealing with at this particular time when we talk about the rapture of the church when we talk about the prophetic timeline of God and the dispensation we live in this is where the controversy comes from if you want to understand it take yourself who have understood these things and have accepted to transform take yourselves like the few that the Lord gave a revelation the few that the Lord gave a revelation during the days when Jesus was born Simeon the Anna and then Joseph and the others the others who don't have it they will not understand it so sometimes we are misled and the reason we are misled is because instead of trusting the word of God and depending on the opinion of the Holy Spirit we want to depend on the opinion of the opinion leaders of this world and the source of the information is not the same for them they are opinion leaders because because they are influential people because they fed on the wisdom of this world
world and when you, it comes to the interpretation of the things of this world you can't they are flawless and so sometimes we have not understood that I mean the Lord has spoken to you about the coming of the Messiah and the Lord is calling you and then you say I've heard but I will need to ask my husband if he allows I mean we are called as individuals hallelujah, hallelujah. so no, no, sometimes we make those errors so as we finish on this he says next he says, he says, Agamba. He says Agamba. the person with the spirit makes judgment about all things but such a person is not subject to mere human judgments so a revelation to be able to understand the things that God is speaking to us as we begin to, to finish now we can go to Matthew to Matthew chapter 13 from verse 10 where I said we open talking about this revelation and why the Lord is talking about us being informed at this time when he's talking about the prophetic timeline of God and talking about to enter in the kingdom of God he's emphasizing the point the point of being informed so Matthew chapter 13 from verse 10 he says the disciples came to him and asked why do you speak to the to, 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 why do you speak to the people in parables he replied because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you but not to them he goes on to say in verse 13 I've jumped verse 12 of, I've gone to verse 13 he says this is why I speak to them in parables though seeing they do not see though hearing they do not hear or, or understand in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah you will, you will again you will be ever hearing but never understanding you will be ever seeing but never perceiving verse 15 for these people's hearts have become cursed they hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes otherwise they might see with their eyes hear with their ears understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them precious people the Lord is speaking to the Pharisees and like I told you that the Pharisees the Pharisees came into existence during that time of the silent period those sects came into existence during that time that time between the book of Malak and the book of Matthew so the Bible 
calls it oh the theologians calls it the silent period and the reason I told you they call it the silent period is because there was no revelation anything that is done without the revelation of God has no God's approval and if you do anything without God's approval that means it's not authorized they appointed themselves in the offices to run the agenda of God but that did not come from the Lord and so because of that they, they missed a point of understanding what the purpose of God was in the scriptures that they had and so these are the people that the Lord is speaking to again for example in Matthew chapter 16 again he addresses them he addresses them he says in Matthew chapter 16 the Bible says the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to Jesus and tested him by asking him to show them a sign from heaven Jesus is here the long awaited Messiah is there had come and the people who presume to be the custodians of the things of God are not aware that's the danger of doing the business of God without a revelation for us when we are seeing the two mega prophets lowered from heaven the others are seeing other things hallelujah, hallelujah. that is the difference and so the Pharisees the Bible says the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to the Lord to test him always they were tricking him because they wanted to arrest him. The two never agreed. Jesus Christ yes, and the Pharisees or the Sadducees they never agreed. Yet both of the parties they were claiming to be serving God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But they never agreed. So the Bible says in verse 2 Jesus replied he replied when evening comes you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red and in the morning today it will be stormy for the sky is red and overcast you know how to interpret the appearance of the sky but you cannot interpret the signs of the times a wicked and an adulterous generation look for a sign but no one will, but no one will be given will be given it except the sign of Jonah Jesus then left them and went away again in the book of Luke chapter 12 verse 54 still the same thing Jesus is being confronted and is addressing them so in verse 54 the Bible says he said to the crowd when you see the crowd raising he said he said to the crowd when you see the cloud raising in the west immediately you say it's going to rain and it does and when the south wind blows you say it's going to be hot and it is hypocrites how you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky 
How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? Then he, verse 57 he says Why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? Precious people You see Still the Lord Emphasizing The point Of understanding The revelation It was a controversy So going back to Matthew chapter 13 those are the people the Lord was speaking to and he's telling them every time he spoke he spoke in parables he spoke in parables in a parable needed interpretation for you to get out the message very well so if you took a parable the way it was written and you interpret it like that then you would no, you would have missed the message. So, the disciples had been invited to be partakers of the kingdom of God. And you know that every time the Lord gave a parable, He also at one time interpreted what it meant. But for the Pharisees, He spoke a parable and He walked away. And yet, the disciples knew very well that the Lord had come on a mission he had come on a mission of admitting everybody in the kingdom of God the disciples also understood that if a person doesn't get the revelation of the kingdom the revelation of the message of the kingdom that is being given in these parables they are not going to enter so it is them. And then they went to the Lord. Because when they looked at the parable, how it was written, and then the message that came out of the parable, hallelujah, hallelujah. there are two different things. And so, without an interpretation, it was not possible for a person to get the message. So they were disturbed. And then they said, Lord, why is it that for us, you speak to us directly. You speak to us the revelation. You speak to us the interpretation. But the rest of the people it is concealed. They are not able to understand it. So the Lord told them because the knowledge of the secret is saying and I'm emphasizing a point where it began from that God is concealed for you to know about him, you need a revelation. And I told you that secret things, put back the Deuteronomy 29, 29 on the screen, secret things belong to God. And what God has decided to reveal to you is only what you will understand. And you will be accountable for that. That's why he says, he says, but the things revealed belong to us. Us. What has been revealed belong to us and to our children forever. But secret things belong to God. So, Jesus is speaking to them. He's speaking to the disciples and he's telling them that for you it is given to understand the secrets of God. But to them it is not given. Does that mean that God is passionate that there are some people he doesn't want to know and there are others that he favors the answer is no because in Matthew here where we have just read when you come where we have just read when you come to verse 15 he tells you the reason why for the others it was not given he's saying in verse 15 for these people's hearts have become callous. And then he says, they hardly hear with their ears and 
they have closed their eyes. It means that it was given to all, but for them, they decided to harden their hearts. They hardened their hearts. How do they harden their hearts? And to the church, I want you to understand this because it's important. Let me tell you if the Lord wants to save you, what He does, He touches your heart. Well, it touches your heart. And when it touches your heart, when you hear a message, it touches you and you tremble. Sometimes you preach a very sensitive message, a very touching message, a message that cuts. And then you find the person trembling before you finish preaching. They are leaving their chairs to cry to God. You find that others, when these ones are on the knees, crying to God, others are seated on the chair, close, crossing their legs. And they, they are wondering, why are these ones crying? Two, two people, they are listening from the same source. Scriptures are being fulfilled. He's, he's saying that you can be two inside the church here. They are those, even as I speak now, they are following adding up things and they are making sense to them but there are others who are hearing a lot of noise and they are disgusted actually they feel time is fast spent it's taking a lot of our time the others are absorbing the message and trying to digest it but this one there is nothing that has, has, has been retained in their hearts whatever that comes in here, it lives through here. They hear here, and then it goes through here. So inside them, everything that is there, they are thinking about. Now I'm hungry. When I live here, I will move like this. There is a canteen here, and they have already decided what they are going to buy. They will buy a donut, and then buy a soda. And the type of a soda is decided when they are here. The message is going on. But a conversation far away from this is also taking place in their hearts they are remembering of a deadline tomorrow I needed to go and then finish this thing so they are here scheming but they are here the message is nothing but that message is a revelation that is admitting people in the kingdom of God and so the time you finish they have nothing why? because these people's hearts are cursed. He is saying these people's hearts these people's hearts have become cursed. And they, they, they say they hardly hear with their ears, ears and they have closed their eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Them said the gospel of the kingdom is given to all. But they are these ones. He says he says he says, he says Greeks, look for wisdom. Greeks, no, Greeks look for wisdom. And Pharisees look for a sign. That's why they ask the Lord there, show us a sign for them to believe. You have to show a sign. And for the Greeks, for them they are so analytical. When you go to meet them and tell them the Messiah is coming, and you know they are researchers, and they are scholars. Serious theologians. They will intimidate you first of all. Young man, you know I'm with a theologian. And then they will begin to tell you about their profile. They will tell you about their profile. When Eid Amin was persecuting the believers here, who are the people who are trying to do this. And so, they are trying to analyze what are you talking about. And then at the end of it, all, because because the hearts are cursed. So they, they are left out. And this is what the Lord is saying. So to such people who are time wasters, 
you rather speak to them in parables that's one group the second group is found in Ephesians chapter 4 Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 17 he says from verse 17 but I'm beginning from verse 18 the, the people those whom the Lord speak to and they will not understand even here talking about the coming of the Messiah but they are not able to understand the Lord is announcing everything is obvious the lame are walking the blind can see we have seen it we have touched it we have tested it the word is being preached to the extent that the prophecies are being fulfilled the Messiah is coming but they are there by the time hallelujah, hallelujah. What, what happened in verse 18 he says they are darkened in their understanding there are people who are there and they choose to be darkened in their understanding and then he says and they are separated from the life of God not because God separated them from him but what they do has made them to be separated from the life of God why? number one because of the ignorance that is in them and this ignorance came about because of the hardening of their hearts is saying there are people when they hear they decide to harden their hearts sometimes they are even able to detect and say this is true but they decide to harden their hearts why? Because they want to see a sign. And if there is no sign, they harden the heart. Others are probing the wisdom of the Greeks. And they want to prove using wisdom, the wisdom of this world, when it does not add up according to what they think. They harden the heart. But then he says, whosoever his heart is dark, whosoever his heart is hardened, He's saying their hearts are also, are also darkening. Their understanding is also darkening. And he says, if you harden the heart when God comes up to bring a revelation, it is universal. And if you harden your heart, then that means you have darkened your understanding. And when you, you, you harden your understanding, you darken your understanding then you are separated from God and those are the people that he is saying that for you who softens the hearts the people with broken hearts when you hear the message you tremble you believe he says for you it is given to understand the things of the kingdom but those who harden the hearts they hear little bit and as if they are believing then they turn around and go away then he's saying the Lord does not accept a loss even the little which they had received is going to be taken away from them and then they are left like that that's what he's talking about here what does the next verse say as we finish he says having lost all sensitivity they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they are full of greed are full of greed next 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 they are full of greed yes those are the people to that don't receive a revelation that we are talking about in these things they will never understand for you when you take it serious but he says but for you that, however it's not the way of life that's not the way you learn for you that's not the way you learn he's saying when all are given a chance God the next verse he's saying when all are given a chance they must be evident because you know the Pharisees when they came to the Lord they did not come to learn they came to investigate when they came to the Lord asking questions they were not asking questions to understand that the 
Lord may give them a revelation. They ask the questions to trap him so that they may finish him. And those were the type of people. And so, even that which they should have received, they ended up losing. This. But for you, you did not learn Christ that way. He says, when you heard about Christ and you were taught in him according, according with the truth that is in Jesus Christ next, he says, you are taught with regard to your former ways of life to put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires next and to be made anew in the attitude of your minds. He's saying that this one also is a determinant for you if you have received a little and then you produce no fruit out of that little then there's no basis for you to receive more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's when we talk about the anointing. When he measured a hundred cubits the water came to the ankle level. When he measured a hundred cubits, again, it came to the knee level. When he measured a hundred cubits, again, it came to the waist level. When he measured a hundred cubits, again, it became a river. The levels of the raising of the Holy Spirit, the levels of bringing the revelation of God, you are called to salvation and the calling you are called says that you should put off your former ways of life and you know it very well that he is saying that the way you learned in the Lord Jesus Christ was that you immediately you come to the Lord you begin to put off your former ways of life where you walked there now you have come here you want to double you to maintain your former ways as well as receiving from the Lord. He's saying the Lord cannot be cheated. Neither can he be mocked. So if you are such a person he says there's no basis for you to receive more. Because the only thing that can make you can make you fail to put off your former way of life is the hardening of the heart. You know the truth that when I come to salvation I need to change and you refuse to change. Number two, you know the truth that when I come to salvation I have to repent and turn away from sin. You come to salvation you don't want to repent. You don't want to turn away from sin. You are still the same. You only changed the church and came here but you are Life is still the same. You are still immoral. You are still wicked. You are still the same. He is saying to such people the revelation will be cut off. And what is going to come next is going to be the hardening of the heart. When you are rebuked, two people are rebuked at the same time. One is rebuked. When he is rebuked because of sin, they break down to repent. For you, when you are rebuked, you harden the heart. Even when the word rebukes you, when you come and you sit here and the word rebukes you, you will say, these people are targeting me. They, they are targeting me. How come they waited for me to come that they begin to speak about these things? I will not go back to their church. Wow. wow. It is our church. We appreciate. But get to know but this is not our church. This is the highway of holiness that is preparing people for the kingdom of God. It is not my laws. Let me tell you, precious people, some of you wanted to revenge. I will not go back to that church. Let me tell you, you are coming here. You are not doing us a favor. Only the devil can lie to you that you are coming here. You being in this ministry, you are helping me. You are not helping me. You are helping yourself. If you leave the highway, and remain on the highway, I will enter the kingdom of God. And you who wandered from the highway, you will go to hell. And that is why when you harden the heart, you will not 
takes out the liberation and the heart becomes harder harder like a stone so today the equation has been solved to understand when you see some people they have been in this church and they are historical they will tell you who are there from this year until this year but they are behaviors and not changing some of them even stumble others they fight others on the basis that they know it all because they have been there from the very beginning but when you look at the, the, the revelation in them they don't have it at a certain point they hardened their heart they are no, no longer receiving they are stunted no revelation no understanding they are just there as you stand up on your feet I want to ask you to know that God is concealed and only those he chooses or only those he chooses to reveal himself to are the ones that will be able to understand number two the kingdom of God is concealed only those God will choose to reveal it to will be able to understand number three the rapture of the church is concealed and if there is anything that is really concealed in the Bible here is the rapture of the church the Bible does not openly talk about it and that's why many people have not been able to understand it to comprehend it to be able to perceive it so today we have seen a lot of things and the point of argument has been about receiving a revelation if you will make it until the end you will need a revelation the Lord to keep on revealing it to you every day every day number two if you will make it until the end the Lord needs to give you a soft heart a soft heart a soft heart a soft heart a heart that is broken because those that have a soft heart are the ones that the Lord keeps on giving more and more he keeps on giving them more and more more and more more and more you can now speak to the Lord based on what you've heard maybe you are this person even when you say cripples walking when we see you intently looking at the screen you are not building you are not building you are not wondering about this wonder but you are looking at the lake comparing get one until you say but this lake looks the same as get one and you are not convinced the heart is hardened no wonder even the message it's very hard for you to understand it and no wonder sometimes you don't have strength even to listen the things about the coming of the Messiah are not important for you sometimes you decide to abandon go do your work the revelation you got is from the world you need a lot from the world no things are wasting my time sometimes you are just at home there you don't have any strength nothing, you are doing nothing but you don't want even to come to hear more the heart is dark the heart is hardened and he says for such people you are separated from the Lord raise the keyboard
verse 18 testifies and says no one has ever seen God but the one and only son who is himself God and is in the closest relationship with the father has made him known and so still emphasizing that God is concealed to know God you need a revelation to know about the kingdom of God you need a revelation to know about the rapture of the church you need a revelation to know about the prophetic timeline of God you need a revelation and when that revelation comes it marks the display session of the open heaven when the Lord comes to speak to the people in a given dispensation and you harden your heart then you will harden it the more you will harden it the more you will take away his lamp stand what he brings to us is the light of salvation but if you fail to understand he takes away his lamp stand from you and then you grow up in the darkness you become wise like the Pharisees they reasoned and reasoned they reasoned and reasoned they reasoned and reasoned including the Sadducees but they miss the point may the Lord help us 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 Thank you.